Hello, Knitting Addicts. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 18 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma, and you can find me all over the internet as uh, Selma's Knits, but all over the internet that mostly means Instagram and Ravelry. I change everything so that it's the same name on all the platforms, mostly. Um, I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome if you're a new viewer and welcome back if you're returning. Um, it's always nice to have you here with me. We haven't seen each other for three weeks, although I posted the Edinburgh um, vlog a couple of days ago. Uh, so I will have a few things to show you today. That will be my finished objects in knitting and sewing, a couple of whips, and I will mostly show you everything I built from Edinburgh, which is quite a few things. Um, well then, grab your cup of tea or coffee or beverage of choice and your whip and let's go! Today I'm drinking a tea from Daman Frère. It's the Bali tea which has... Um, it's green tea with rose... Uh, what's... grapefruit? <laughs> and lychee and it's really nice although it's still a little hot right now <laughs> but then if i don't drink it now you know because because it's too hot i will just leave it to the side forget it it will be cold and then i won't want to drink it anymore so as long as i don't really burn my tongue it's okay i guess uh, we can start directly with my whips no with the finished objects sorry i'm already confused that's nice because I've I've just filmed the French episode and uh, sometimes I mix things up between both. Anyway, no spoilers. I will uh, start with this sewing project, which is uh, it's a birth present actually for one of my best friends who should have given birth a couple of days ago, but still hasn't. Um, I think she's seriously getting fed up with it, but. That's nature, I guess. It doesn't always go as planned. So I made this blanket. I was about to say this small blanket, but it's not actually small. It's 92 centimeters on 92 centimeters. So I guess she will be able to use it for quite some time. <laughs> so it's a girl, but I guess the color is... Well, the colors are still neutral enough that you could use it for a boy, I guess. Well, particularly the front one. Um, I chose a light pink dusty rose color for the back. Both come from the, the haberdashery of my good friend Sophie. She has a great selection of yarns and, and fabrics and everything. And I'm not saying that because she's my friend, but because her shop is really, really nice. It's, uh, it's in Paris at the Metro Parmentier. It's really close to the station. Anyway, it's a very basic two squares uh, sewn together and um, like um, right sides facing, you know, leaving an opening on the bottom and just then with a, another stitch on top so that it looks a bit more finished, you know, and then also it closes the bottom bar, which I, which stayed open. I chose this because, well, these colors, because the parents said we don't want anything too girly, you know, so it will, it will, it still, it still is pink, but it's not too obvious either, so I think it will fit quite well. Um, that was my sewing project, it took me a couple of hours on an evening. The longest part was actually cutting everything together and then pinning them together because I don't really have a surface which is big enough to actually, well, what if I did it on the floor, but then I didn't vacuum and I, well, you know what I mean. I didn't want to put it on the floor either. I could have, but I didn't want to. So I had to do with my uh, living room table, which is quite big. It's a, it's a square and you can open ears, let's say on the side to extend it a bit, but it still wasn't enough to have a piece of fabric that big at once. Anyway, so that's my sewing project. My first finished object in knitting is my my um, 
entry for the Black Hood Podcast, which took place before before the festival. I used Black Hood Yarns in Shetland for the Grey and the White, and the Black Welsh Mountain for the Black. That's DK, and the Black is Aaron. But it still worked. I showed you last time it was barely started, so... I'm I'm really happy how, about how it turned out. On the picture on Ravelry, I actually there is a visible mistake. Uh, that's I I knit in grey instead of black on one stitch, and I just saw it when when I took the picture. So the the hat was completely finished. Made no sense to 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 frog everything or any or and it was just one stitch. So I just used Swiss darning and I stitched over it. I couldn't even tell you which actually which it actually is. Yeah. No, I can't tell you. That's just because I know where it is. It's here. There. Yeah, this one. It wasn't obvious when I was wearing it at the, at the beginning and it's really ba basically invisible now. I added the pom-pom at the top because it's pretty stiff, you know, with the color work here. So I wanted it a little heavier because I don't really intend to wear my hat this way, you know. <laughs> it is fun, but it's just not my style. So I put the 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 pom pom to add a bit of weight to pull it to the back a bit more. Yeah, it's, it was fun to knit and it's really pleasant to wear. It's warm and comfortable. It doesn't scratch at all. I just I just love it. I was so happy to have it. Um, in Edinburgh with the weather we had like wind and rain and snow mostly wind and snow actually but it was nice I even I even have it on some of the pictures I took there some of the selfies with the other podcasters because um, it wasn't that warm when I entered the marquee and uh, I just wanted to keep it so we have pictures in coats and scarves and hats anyway but it is quite more warm in my living room, so I will take it off for now. But I really like it, I think. I was about to say I've been wearing it non-stop since I finished it. It's not quite true because lately it got a little warmer in the morning, so I went for something which is slightly lighter. But I still really, really love it. Um, and the third finished project in knitting is this. It's been in the picture from the beginning. It's my pavement sweater. The, the um, pattern is by Vera Velemeki. And um, I just really love it. I bought the yarn to make it in Berlin and I started it at the end of October. 25th, I think, is the date I entered in my on the Ravelry page of the project. But I basically knit, knit the beginning and then I ripped it off and started again and again. And yeah, I, I think I started it three times before I actually managed to get something which satisfied me. Um, it was it was, it is my first real sweater, you know. I knit like a cardigan before, but it has uh, it had seams, so the construction was really new for me. And I'm very happy that I chose this pattern because it's very clear, it's well explained, and it has no real difficulty. And also, it has three quarter sleeves. Oh, oh, what the hell! Seriously, what the hell? Anyway, I will fix that later. It seems like um, one of my decreases ripped off. I don't know how that happened, but um, anyway, I will try to not focus on it for the end of until the end of the video. Yeah, I really liked it. It was very easy to knit. I was actually wondering once it was finished why I didn't actually finish it earlier, but probably I just got bored with the stocking that stitch and yeah i don't know but i was very happy to make it my edinburgh sweater i actually had quite a few compliments which was nice because i didn't really expect them because it's such a simple pattern and such a neutral color um it's called getrocknete lavender um which means dried lavender and uh yeah it's just 100 percent merino by frida fuchs and it's just a nice nuanced gray. I like it really a lot actually. I also wore it lately with my um 
with my botanic pants, which I showed you last time, uh, tucking in the front and leaving it flowing on the, in the, back, on the back. And it's really nice as well. It's very comfortable. It doesn't scratch. I just wear it with a, a car, um, tank top underneath and works. Uh, it works perfectly. Um, so yeah, that's it for my finished objects. It's not too bad, though, right? And I liked it so much, I actually started a um, sweater very recently as well, which I will show you right now. It's called the Secret Sweater, Secret. It's its name, it's not the fact that it's actually a secret. Um, I'm knitting it in a mix of these two, which are, that's silk and mohair, and that's... Uh, I don't remember what it is, but I think it has silk as well. <laughs> the colors are called an elephant in a porcelain in a china shop. So like, it's very nice gray. And they come from Lena Mouré. I think I showed them to you. I don't remember when. I'm knitting it in 4.5 needles because my my swatch, which I did in the in the size recommended by the pattern, size four, was too tight. So I yeah I last time I told them that I would make it in three seventy seventy five, but it made it made no sense, and I recognized it after I filmed the podcast. So I went for four and a half, and the swatch was fine. So here it is. It's fairly easy. It's going to be very nice with the V neck. I think that. Um, Someone this weekend, I will actually remove these and put them on hold and start on the on the sleeves. That way, you know, when it when the sleeves are done, I can go to the body, and when the body is done, I'm finished with the with the sweater, and I won't actually get bored finishing the sleeves. You know, stranded on sleeve island. Um, I don't really have much to say about it. Um, I actually. Uh, I actually almost killed myself at Edinburgh at the festival because I recognized that at some point I had completely forgotten to do the the, the increases in the back, you know? So I had to rip off like this and uh, basically start again from the beginning. But it's easy knitting. You can do that on the, tr on the subway or in the bus or anything because it's just stop net stitch. Um, yeah. That's basically it. My second work in progress, I just started yesterday on the subway. It's the beginning of a small cardigan for a baby. It's going to be for my sister-in-law who doesn't watch this podcast, so I can show you. Um, just like the cover, no one, none of my friends actually really watches my podcast. That's good. I can I can show what I make for them, and they won't know before I before I offer them. Anyway, so yeah, I use these, which are not the best because they're a little big, so it's not that easy to make the increases before and after them. Uh, and also they tangle together. But I recognized that I had forgotten to put them on the row which they were supposed to be going. What, what? I had just finished that row and I recognized I was supposed to put the markers. So I just used these because they open, you know. They're just more convenient for that kind of stuff, but I will need to replace them. But definitely not on the subway because, well, I don't really want to lose markers, you know. And uh, that happens on a regular basis when I use markers on this, on some projects in the subway. Anyway, I just started it. It's um, it's Lil Weasel by Lil Weasel. I bought it at the same haberdashery as the fabrics I showed you earlier. It's 100% merino. Superwash. The color is called porcelain, which is China, basically. I would have gone for. Well, I, w I think I wouldn't have called this China because it just doesn't really fit, right? I would have called China something more white. But anyway, I'm not the one who names the colors, so no, no one is interested in my opinion. Uh, anyway, and I keep it in my Hanna Lisa Hafakam bag, which is so nice. Which I have a new one of now. Yay! Uh, do I have another thing to show you? I don't remember. I need to check my notes. Oh yes, my memory blanket, which is buried somewhere under the piles of yarns around me. Uh, it is just the beginning. I did four squares on the train two weeks ago. 
Um, it's just very easy. I use actually leftovers from my knitted projects, so that's a piece of my sweater. And, uh, and minis, which I buy at festivals. So these three come from um, Berlin. They're actually named after Berlin landmarks or symbols, which, is, which I find really nice. Um, yeah, it's called a memory blanket. So I decided to go for the memory part of it. It's really, it's not that, I was about to say it's really simple. No, it's not really simple. It, the picking up the stitches is actually a bit annoying, but I don't like to do this on any project. So um, I didn't weave in the ends yet. I will start doing it soon because otherwise I will just have a thousand of them to weave in when, uh, the, when the, the, the blanket is actually finished. So I should start, I should take a head start. Where can I put it so I don't lose it? So, yeah. All right. We can move on to my EYF purchases. Oh, no, wait. There's one thing which I will show you before we actually start on EYF purchases. It's this set. I bought this one yesterday from Les Petits Points Parisiens, which is a yarn shop close to Montmartre. Um, oh, reflexive. <laughs> anyway, it's their basic fingering base, 100% merino, uh, and the shade is called Light Coquelicot, so I think it's Poppy, yeah, Poppy. It's a beige which has some um, pink and grey undertones, it's very nice. And I chose to pair it with these three which I already had in my stash. Um, this one is Big Sock, so Merino and Nylon by um, Madeleine et Philibert in the shade Cologne. And this one is Mary, so 100% Superwash Merino. The colorway is called Hamburg, and it's the same dyer, Madeleine et Philibert. And this is a leftover from my tracker um, mitts and hat, which I did for Edinburgh last year. I still have some after making, after using it, knit double for the pebble hat, so I will use that as the last shade. It's Riverside Studio, I think the colorway is called Mushroom, but I'm not 100% sure, but it has Stellina, it's very nice. So these four will go together for the Lunar Phase Cal. Uh, most of the people I chose, I saw chose more contrasted colors, but then I didn't want to buy all new stuff just for this. I blame uh, my friend MJ Margeva, who also has a podcast, who posted about it on her Instagram page two days ago, I think. The first clue, it's a mystery cow. It started, the first clue came up yesterday night, but I was a bit tired and I didn't... Um, Oh, I didn't. Yeah, these weren't ready to knit, so I thought I'm going to go to bed and I will start on that tomorrow. I have no idea what it would look like, which made it really hard to actually choose um, colors to make it. The idea is to follow the phases of the moon. So you have to have four colors. The first one is the moon. The second basically is transi transition sky. And the last one is night. And the fourth is basically the stars. So that's my moon, that's my transition, and that's my night, and that's my stars. Yeah, I didn't want to make something which I wouldn't wear, you know. So I'm very happy with my choice. Although a friend actually promised to um, pay for my dinner on the day she sees me knitting something which is more colorful <laughs> at one of our knit nights, you know. Yeah, that reputation which I have. Oh well, I don't mind at all actually. So, on to EYF purchases. I will start with the yarn. And I will start with uh, the stuff which is most easily available. Oh, yeah. So, in this beautiful bag, uh, which is by Hanna-Lisa Hafakam, just like the other one, the small one, which is the, her big size, I think it's called Midnight in the Gobi Desert. I might get, I might be wrong there, but I really like her bags. They're 
sustainable. She's very transparent about everything that she makes. This one, this size has two pockets and two, whatever the name of this thing actually is. And it's big enough to hold seven skeins of 50 grams each of Sophia by Kuknitz. So I went for this one to make the Lady Mademoiselle Dandelion by Long Avec Anna. And I needed seven skeins. And I actually transported them in this bag in my suitcase. Oh god. One more! Oh. Oh god, again? Put it in my eye. Pourquoi? Well, that's my seven skin. I like the color. Um, it's um, it's a navy, but it has it has some nuance. You know, it's not it's not plain navy. It's a bit grayish as well. The colorway is called Benitoit. Benitoit. I have no idea. I don't even know if this is going to be readable for you i'm sorry it doesn't seem to be focusing actually i um i don't i would like to know how this thing actually focuses i'm really sorry about that so it's 20 it's 50 grams uh 212 meters 231 yards um 75 fine superwash merino wool 25 percent nylon the lady mademoiselle dandelion is actually a cardigan i think it will look really nice in this color to fit it all back in because the table you know i opened one of the extensions and it's still there's still not that much free free space on it so <laughs> there so you have my first sweaters quantity of yarn which i bought the second one actually about that one i was very happy that i bought compression that i brought compression bags with me because I don't think my suitcase would have been able to close otherwise with all the stuff I brought. So, this one comes from Uistwo. Sorry, the pronunciation is not so good. It's chunky and I'm going to butcher the name of this. It's called Beota. Beota? I don't know. If you do, let me know again. So that means beast. It's chunky, 100 gram mixed breeds, and uh, 110 meters per 100 grams. I'm going to use it to knit a Carbeth sweater, and I will make it in a in a cropped version, so I can wear it with um, my what's the word I'm looking for? High waisted pants and skirts and stuff, which I I'm wearing a lot at the moment because I think it will look very nice with a shorter length so I needed something which had some structure you know and this yarn really is beautiful it's uh, it's rustic it has a lot of presence I'd say um, it's slightly uneven at some points but I think it will look really really nice in a sweater this way the well the Used wool um, booth had some amazing weaved uh, scarves. Fortunately, I didn't have two hundred twenty-five pounds to put in that kind of things, but maybe if I if I save enough, I will be able to afford one next time because it was really really nice. But don't get me wrong, I did spend over two hundred pounds there, but I didn't have two hundred twenty-five additionally to the to the, what to the rest. So, yeah, but that definitely took some space. The Carbeth is supposed to be knit in DK held double or in chunky. And I went for chunky because I didn't want to have 10 more, um, 10 more skeins to transport. The last sweater's quantity of yarn which I bought, oh, this is not it, um, is to make the um, Blofiel sweater by skein deer i got where's the last one oh yeah i got five balls of gray and some of the other colors well one of each of the other colors um so the gray and the white are shetland because i really really like um knitting them in my in my hat so they're all from blacker yarns 
the blue one is their British wool, uh, so it's not said what what the mix is actually, or unless it's inside. Ooh. Mainly you well, made from British wool fleeces from our selected British supplier farms, mainly using white mule wool from Cornwall. So yeah, I went for navy. The color is called navy. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I think it would look really nice with these. It's more neutral than the original one, although it was also made mostly with blue. I think it will be very nice. It will be my first color waist sweater. So proud of myself. So that's it for the sweaters quantities of yarn. Um, I bought from Blacker Yarn still, I bought four balls, well, one of each of their uh, undyed Jacob in full ply, but it's not for me, it's for a friend. She saw my uh, swatch, which I uh, knit with um, with what Blacker sent me to, to introduce their, their Jacob, and she really liked it, and she's more into neutral, just like me. Hi, if you're looking. If you're watching this, know that I'm talking about you. Um, she's more into neutrals, actually. I think she's the one who showed me that you could actually own your neutrals as well. Uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what she will actually make with these. I bought a skein of Moelle View yarn to make a Itat hat by um, Marie Amélie Designs. It's 100% Welsh mule, DK weight. It's very nice, nuanced white with grey. She had the most gorgeous, uh, gorgeous colors with with silk and such shiny, shiny colors. I really, really loved her booth. Um, but I couldn't buy everything, unfortunately, so I settled for this because I wanted some DK. Yeah. I also bought um, a skein from Cosmic Strings Inspirational Yarn. She's based in Edinburgh, and this one is for Superwash Merino and Nylon Bays. The color is called Snowdrift. Found it very nice. It's going to be a pair of socks when I actually muster the courage to start a pair of socks. And there would probably be some in my memory blanket as well. I really liked the shades of blue. There's a bit of red as well, some black. Her booth was really, really colorful. It was very, very nice. God, I feel like I'm saying it was very, very nice about everything I saw there, but it was. It was. It's not my fault. I got two balls of Eurodae yarns in their double knit weight, organic native Shetland wool. I don't know if you will hear that, but my neighbors actually... Um, I don't know, hammering something in his flat. That's the problem when you actually have someone over there, over you. Anyway, so um, this is called Flucra, so that's natural white, and that's grave, grave, so that's shit and black. And I think they will look very nice together in a pair of Winterwater or in a pair of Selby mittens. I don't know yet, but I bought a second uh, pair of colors to make. Um, Color white mittens, and that's these from Wensleydale or long wool. They're actually very, very soft. The Wensleydale long wool sheep actually looks completely crazy. It has those beautiful curls, you know, um, and it makes for a very hairy yarn, which is a pretty big halo. But it's not, it's not scratchy, you know, because sometimes they can be a bit irritating. But these are very soft. Mm, I love them. I love them. I love dis actually discovering new yarns from specific breeds. We don't really have that in France yet. Maybe it's going to develop. I don't know. Maybe not. I hope it does. The last uh, big quantity I bought was from um, Isolda's booth slash pop-up store because it was gigantic. Um, it's her Elska hat so you have the pattern and the yarn from uh, Jameson and Smith it's 
her, their Shetland heritage, I think. Yeah. And I chose the blue, and I blame my friend Nadesh for that because she told me, "Ah, oh, I'm really, I, I really regret not buying it." And I said, "Well, if you want, I can go there and pick one up for you." And she said, "Oh, that would be so nice." So I took her the red one, and I got the blue one for me because it was just too nice. I know that Ramsey Baggins, that's her name on Instagram. Um, Pip has already almost finished hers, and it looks amazing. So I really can't wait to actually cast it on. I, well, the last yarns I bought were minis for my memory blanket. At first I went, I was like, oh, I'm only going to get one. So I got this one from Queen of Pearls. It's a bit messy because I actually removed some to make a, um, how would you call that, a safety line for one of my projects. Anyway, I took a really small part, but it looks very nice. It's from uh, the Sleeket here. Well, actually, it's it's not the label is not really clear if that's the colorway or the name of the dyer. I don't know. I think it's the name of the dyer. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's a hundred percent super washed blue face Leicester Mary. Yeah, blue face Leicester wool. Twenty grams, approximately eighty meters. I really like the shades of blue and green in there. And then I well. Exactly opposite um, opposite Queen of Pearls, you had Muffy and the Squid, which dyes yarns um, inspired by nature, fish, insects, plants. Well, their logo is this. You like it or you don't like it, but her colorways are just gorgeous. I got three minis because it was cheaper to buy three. Anyway, um, so this one is called Mountain Moth. This one is called coconut octopus and this one is called heather actually i went for that one at first that's the one i wanted in the first place and then i thought oh this one is so nice and then i was like oh but this one is so nice as well and then it's cheaper if you get three you know so anyway uh it's super wash merino and nylon 84 meters for per 20 grams and they will look amazing in my memory blanket and probably as part of socks as well, because I will have a lot left after I knit the square, because I think I use basically five grams max for uh, one square. Yes, so that was all the, all the yarn I bought. Um, I also bought a kit to make a dorset button by TJ Frog, Tanya, which was it was really, really lovely meeting her. She's an amazing person. And I chose this one in silver. I think I will set it as a brooch, you know, something to wear on my, on my, oh God, on my sweater or something. I, her work is really, really nice. She is working to conserve, basically revive the Dorset button industry. And her works, uh, her handmade uh, buttons are amazing. And I thought I would just get a kit to make one myself. Because I like a challenge, again. Um, also, I bought non-yarn stuff. I got this uh, yarn show planner, which was sold at the festival. It has room enough for four shows to plan with um, travel projects, vendors not to be missed, uh, all the travel details and um, patterns to shop for with the, with the name and the yardage, the size and everything. And then note pages, squares, which are not actually really square, but I think they're having a party upstairs. Yeah, I'm sorry, they're, they just turned on the music, so I hope you, it won't bother you too much, but that's it. I got uh, three cards from Tilly Flop. I will only show you two of them because the third one is not for me, but it's to offer to a friend and I don't really want her to stumble upon this by accident. I got this one, which is I went to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival and I all I bought was this card. This little star goes to the back that says that might be a little bit of a lie. It is a lie, <laughs> definitely. 
And the second one is called Casting On Means You Believe in Tomorrow and probably next year too. I actually didn't see that before I filmed the French podcast when I was showing this and I saw, oh, that's nice. She had a really, really nice selection of cards and stickers. I also got one. This one says, warning, this vehicle is fitted with a tracking device. It tracks yarn, fabric, kick, and gin. I actually had my first gin tonic when I was in Edinburgh this time, and um, I found it really good, actually. I was wondering how I'd never tasted that before. To be honest, I am not that much into alcohol, although I do drink some occasionally, but yeah. Gin tonic with us. I got a pair of Chiogu um, double point, no, not double pointed, circular needles. It's 24 inches, 60 centimeters, and size 2.75 for my sock projects. Mm. Also, from the little gray girl, I got this. Let's call that a travel gauge because it's solid enough to be transported. It's plastic. It's small. It has a small... I guess it's supposed to be attached to a keychain, but I will never attach this to my keychain because I would never be able to put my keys in my handbag anymore because it's pretty small. <laughs> but anyway, it's a uh, five on five, so uh, basically two inches, five centimeters. And it has the needle gauge as well. I think it's going to be really good. I'm still able to actually multiply things by two if I'm checking a swatch, so it should be no problem. And it's better on the go than having a big... Um, wooden one because mostly well the most the the gauges i've seen are were in uh, were made of wood it's more fragile than this i think also i took the one with the glitter you will not see anything because i'm showing you the side that doesn't have glitter but this one does Ooh. From the little grey girl, I also got two of these notion small notion notion pouches so it has the uh, Meter, small pencil, a mini hook, a spare yarn, a needle, and um, project keeper. Yeah, and small foldable scissors, which will be acceptable on a plane. And a highlighter, which is good for your project. Never found such tiny highlighters before. I got two because I want to organize a giveaway soon uh, for well for when when I reach a thousand subscribers, I will organize a small giveaway. So we're not there just yet, but we're slowly getting there. It makes me extremely happy actually, and um, and that way I will have a pretty nice uh, prize for the giveaway. If I go buying more stuff every time so the gray is for me and the one for the giveaway is red it won't zip well it will zip but the hook was resisting i got a medal from the knitting goddess it says i knit so i don't kill people and on the back it says that deserves a medal and it does and it's it's basically my knitting philosophy i got Sorry. I got more pins and badges. This one from Spin Cycle Yarns that has that small pirate sheep. It says it in Brian Fest. And um, yeah, I found it so cute. I got this one, the sewing machine by Pink Hazel. Because oh yeah, I forgot to show you what I got from Pink Hazel. And those two pins uh, from the festival itself. I pre-ordered these and uh, I, when I arrived I also got the really big um, the really big tote bag which is over there so I won't, I won't show it to you but it's just a really big tote bag with a, with a sheep head you know on it because I thought that it would be more convenient to transport everything. Um, oh yeah, pink hazel. Sorry. It's actually the first thing I bought when I arrived at the festival because last year she was basically robbed of everything. She was completely sold out and this year it happened again. So I was very happy I managed to snatch one of her baskets. 
So it has a separation in the middle and pockets on the side. And it's going to be really nice for my projects which get too big to be transported. So I can just leave it at home in the living room and uh, bring it from room to room and if needed. Very happy about it. So that's all. No, that's not all at all. I got books actually. Got a lot of books. Um, I got this one, something new to learn about cables, which is basically learning you new techniques. It says easy to follow tutorials and beautiful patterns to teach you something new about cables. I'm not really an advanced cable knitter. Um, that's why I picked this one. It's by Arnold Califord, Arnold Califord Knitwear. So basically all chapters have techniques and a project to actually apply those techniques. The tutorials have really, really precise pictures. Everything is well detailed, very well explained. Um, the projects are also very nice. So you have like this hat, you have mittens slash mitts, since you can actually make one or the other with the pattern. You have a cowl, which is really, really beautiful. This really well, it's the same pattern, but it's used for a blanket. The patterns are by uh, different designers. And um, yeah, I think I will learn a lot actually with this book. The second book I got was uh, from the, um, I think it's called Dye Ninja. It was on their book anyway. And it's this thing of paper by Carrie Westerman. I, consider, I was considering ordering it before I went to the festival and then I thought, ah, it will probably be available somewhere. And if not, then I will order it when I'm back. Um, it's um, inspired by books, manuscripts, very well researched. Um, it's so, so the back says, tracing the development of the written word from 14th century manuscript to the earliest printed books. This thing of paper is a stunning collection of 11 knitting patterns accompanied by thought-provoking and personal essays, atmospheric photographs, and practical knitting advice. So basically, I um, put it on my bedside table and I read a bit of it every evening when I go to bed. It has um, 10 patterns, which all bear the name of a technique or a place related to, uh, to um, writing, books, we have shawls. You have a lot of text. You also have mittens. There are cardigans, cows. Well, I, I say everything in the plural, but it's, you don't necessarily have several of each. But um, yeah, it's very well written, well researched, extremely interesting. So I highly recommend it. The two bo other books I bought, I found on the Isolde booth and. Um, well, the first, they, they were, let's say I indulged in these because I got the Selbywater book, which I just massacred, I think, because I don't speak Norwegian, I'm sorry. It's part of my plans, actually, to start learning Norwegian, but um, it has very researched historical pages that retrace the history of the mittens with pictures, you know, a lot of text as well. <laughs> well, I do get a bit of it because I learned Swedish some time ago, although I, I am by far not um, a very good speaker of Swedish, but with between Swedish, no, uh, between Swedish, English and German, I managed to get the gist of most of the stuff. Um, the pictures are beautiful and you also have a lot of um, of charts which is basically something for which you don't actually need to speak Norwegian and that's good yeah it's really beautiful well researched a bit again with examples and yeah sections of charts at some point I don't remember where it is but you have you have those um, floral patterns but you also have uh, alphabets numbers um, abstract stuff yeah it's a very very 
beautiful book. It's 294 pages, no, 96 pages. I think it was edited by the by a Norwegian museum, you know, because there is a museum for it. For this mittens. Um, I think Selby is the area, the region, or the town where they come from. I'm looking forward to reading more of this. If, if reading actually is the word for what I'm going to do, decipher more of it. The second book I got is The Vintage Shetland Project by Susan Crawford. It's the result of eight years of research. And it's, it's basically a bible for Shetland knitting. Um, it's um, 470 pages, basically, with 100 almost of historical knowledge about Shetland knitting history. The pictures are beautiful, really gorgeous. You have more modern information as well. Um, and she researched and she adapted traditional patterns to the modern taste construction of patterns. It's just an amazing book, really. I have a lot of old pictures and I think I counted 23 patterns on you. 23 or 27 actually, I can't remember. I think it was 23. I will count them again. Twenty-seven. So twenty-seven patterns um, with very, very precise construction instructions, construction details, and um, amazing charts. These, these tell you where to end the, sh the sleeves if you want them shorter on the women's pat on the women's version, if you want them longer on the men's version. Um, if if you well where to where to start where the where the pattern is supposed to start on the armhole on the front so that you actually know if your if your rows are right you know it's really beautiful I, I'm amazed by the amount of work that went into that that book really I didn't have the the chance to meet Susan Crawford um, but she was there I know. I would probably have asked her to actually sign this book. It smells so nice of new new paper, you know. I love it. I'm looking forward to reading it as well. Um, I will probably have enough reading for a couple of years <laughs> with all of that. Um, with the, the speed I'm knitting at, uh, reading at the moment. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's going to be long distance culture. The last thing I got is something which, just like the project bag by Hanalisa, um, the designer was kind enough to actually deliver in person because she was coming to the festival. It's the Adventures in Yarn notebook by Popcorn and Crocodiles. I bought it on Etsy after hearing about it on um, the Knit British podcast. It has, so it's basically a knitting notebook, knitting or crocheting. It has a color wheel in the beginning and um, a gauge for knitting and crochet in case you're on the go and you just have your notebook. It has six um, plastic page protectors, pouches, pockets. For for now, I just, I basically put uh, cards, business cards and and various info that I was handed it, handed that I got at the festival. It's it's divided in six sections. Five of them are more well general notes. So you have lines and and um, and blank pages and squared pages. Every section ends with uh, yarn notes where you can actually attach attach a piece of yarn to the side and it's foldable so it doesn't stay in the way, you know, when, when the notebook is closed. So you write the yarn, your notes and everything. Um, the last section has the yarn inventory pages and uh, to-do lists, goals and reminders, and, um, and also 
things you can actually cut out to attach to your um, sample, to your swatches, to your knitting swatches. I, for now, have started using it as a notebook for my pattern ideas because I've I've had so many ideas of things I would like to actually make and create lately that I thought I would yeah, start using this notebook for it. It was a bit of a small spoiler for you. Um, no, you couldn't see anything. I don't know if these patterns will ever come to light, life. But um, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking on them and this notebook will really be perfect for me because I don't need a notebook which has specific, specific project details. Um, like, well, I have seen several which are really, really nice on their own terms, let's say, with project details, the yarn, the, the, the gauge, the project notes, generally speaking. I don't really need that because I need all the information about my projects on uh, Ravelry. I've tried writing it down, but it doesn't really work for me. So this one will be very good for more freestyle um, note-taking about projects, which I envision. Actually, Emily was uh, kind enough to give me a second one, which I will be um, offering as a giveaway on my Instagram account very soon. So keep your eyes open if you're interested in um, actually seeing it and receiving it. It's very, very nice. It's really good quality paper. It's free thick. The front and the back are slightly, um, um, how to say that? I wouldn't go for walks, but they're they're sturdy. Let's say they're they're pretty hard wearing. So that's not something I would be afraid of putting in my handbag and just toting around everywhere. And um, spirals are also super convenient to actually open it, keep it open that way, or leave it open on the on a table or something. It's very good. It's very well thought. Um, what more can I tell you about the festival? Honestly, um, I still have my pass with all my all the badges attached to it. It got heavier and heavier every day because it's it's a really big trend at the moment to offer pins and buttons and badges for everyone. Some of them are general Edinburgh related, and some of them came from from uh, other podcasters. It was amazing. I was lucky enough to be able to go every day, although that's not exactly what I had planned, but I saw so many beautiful things, so many gorgeous projects. There was so much inspiration in the air. Um, there were sometimes, you could see like five people uh, lined up to take a picture of their, of their um, sweater, which was the same pattern, you know, in different colors and slightly different um, textures as well because of the yarn they used. But uh, most of all, it was amazing because of the people who went. Um, I meant, I meant, I met a lot of really, really kind people. Um, even my husband says that the knitting community is really very kind, actually. Um, of course, you have some um, bad eggs, let's say, but generally speaking, you don't meet that many. Um, I um, I met a lot of other podcasters, which was very nice because they know the work that goes behind episodes, you know, so when they say that they like what you do, it's very gratifying. But I also met a lot of regular viewers um, and that's that's very nice as well. Everyone was so kind and, and telling me that they like what, that, what I do and... Um, yeah, well, you know, you don't you don't podcast in a vacuum, so it's always nice to have the um, what the word, feedback from your peers and from um, from your viewers in general. It was very funny because my podcast is very small compared to some of the, them, and uh, and you see some some podcasters they just go through the room and they are stopped every 15 meters by someone who wants to tell them that they love what they see what they that they love what they do and what they see in the podcast and um 
I call them knitting royalty, actually. It's, uh, it's really funny. It's very funny. It's, it's because everyone is so nice and so, so inspiring, you know, you just want to come over to them and tell them that you like what you do, what you, what they do. I, I did it myself, you know, I went up to people and I probably sound like a maniac when I say that I really like what they do, but, um, yeah, sometimes I feel a bit, I don't know, anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It was just, generally speaking, very nice. So thank you to everyone who came to see me to say that they like what I do and um, um, even to give me ideas or, or of things that I could talk about or of things that I could actually improve on. Um, I'm very grateful for each and every one of you because, well, that I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't have had this opportunity of taking part to the podcaster lounge if you weren't there. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Um, before I get too emotional, I will uh, wrap this up and say goodbye. Um, I think that I've told you everything I wanted to tell you anyway. We will be back to a more regular format next week next week next episode which will probably not be next week um thanks again for being here today with me and uh, i will see you very soon in the meantime take care enjoy your knitting enjoy your sewing bye